Without playing a game yesterday, the Chicago Bulls move into the 10th and final playing spot, technically, in this NBA season. We're going to talk about how they could push that lead even further with their play. We're also going to talk about some more details that kind of highlight how much better the Bulls are playing and preview today's game against the Cleveland Cavaliers and go into the mailbag. All that and more right after this. You are now tuned in to Chicago Bulls Central, your number one place for all Chicago Bulls news and content. What's going on, Bulls fans? Welcome to another episode of Chicago Bulls Central, your number one spot for everything Chicago Bulls related. I'm the host, Sarah Hayes, but more importantly, you guys can follow the channel at Bulls Central Pod on every social media platform we happen to be on. With that being said, let's go ahead and get into the content for today. And so yesterday, with all the losses and things that movement around the NBA as far as wins and losses, the Chicago Bulls officially moved into the 10th and final play-in spot, technically. And even though standings, like I've always said, I want to be clear here, uh, standings to the point, it, they matter to a degree, but I don't start really watching them closely um, until about February, around the All-Star break. But the Bulls now, they're technically in a tie as far as win percentage. Uh, I'm sorry, as far as number of wins uh, with the Atlanta Hawks, but they have a, they have a, a better win percentage. We own the tiebreaker or something like that. So um, the Bulls are now in the 10th spot, the 10th spot. And so this you, it presents the Bulls with, a, with an opportunity to create a little bit more distance as they go forth into an easier part, easier month of their schedule around mid-January. So right now, if the Bulls win three of the remaining four games in the month of, of December, it would be the first time since December 2014 that the Bulls have won 10 games in a single month. Since 2014, we are talking nine years. That's crazy. So, you know, the Bulls have the opportunity to do something right now. Uh, you know, that they, they, they can, you know, create a little bit more distance, do something special. If they beat the, Cav- the Cavaliers tonight, um, and then we take care of business against the Hawks and the Pacers. Um, those are those are games that right now, the, the Hawks, we know they're struggling. The Pacers have been playing a little bit worse as well. At that point in time, you're looking at a team that not only has moved commandedly into that final playing spot and may even be able to go higher than that, we we have a chance to, to be back at 500 when we face the 76ers on December 30th, but you do know that the Sixers are going to be definitely looking out for blood with the way that we beat them last time. So, th- listen, the Bulls, are, the movement is real, and that's why, we, you know, when we talk about things like the change around this team is real, um, how far can this team go, asking those questions, saying are the Bulls back, it all points to, like, the Bulls have an opportunity to show that that's that that's the real case, and hopefully they do. And I think that this team has more than enough capability to do it with the way that they're playing right now, the heart that they're playing with. We got a couple of voicemails on that. This is a Bulls team that you can look to seriously make some movement. And then when you look at the style of play, so right, just to bring it all together, I love my numbers because it brings us together. Now again, you had to watch basketball; it's more than just the numbers. But these are numbers people may not be looking at when we talk about how much better the Chicago Bulls are playing. We're not just talking about compared to how they were playing before. It's also amongst their peers around the NBA. This is just a good basketball team. Through the first 19 games of the season, the Bulls only got 19, basically 20 touches uh, in the paint, uh, 20 touches in the paint per game. Right now, we are doing, we are getting 24 touches in the paint per game, and we rank sixth in the NBA in that stat. Catch and shoots. We ran 29 uh, catch and shoot opportunities for tw- for 20th um, in the NBA. Right now. 37. That's second in the NBA. And so when you talk about things and people talk about like how Zach could play theoretically on that team, when you see how many more catch and shoot points per game we're getting, right? You go from 29 catch and shoot points to 37. That's a big difference. And Zach Levine, as dangerous as he can be in the catch and shoot part of his game, that points towards that could definitely help. And Zach Levine could theoretically factor in there. But again, uh, you know, we'll see if that ends up happening. Assists per game. The Bulls are averaging 22.2 assists per game through the first 19 games. Now, 26.8. They rank 13th in the NBA in that stat. Potential assists per game, 43. That was 25th in the NBA. Right now, 49.7, almost 50. We're 8th in the NBA in that stat. Passes per game, 283 passes per game. We were always really good at that. We were 15th in the NBA. So, top half of the league. Um, but now, 311.7. That's good enough for second in the NBA. Seconds per touch. How, how, how often is the ball sticking? The Chicago Bulls in the first 19 games, 2.97 seconds per touch, meaning that players are holding on to that ball a little bit. Now, it's 2.8, good enough for fourth. We were 24th in the NBA before. We're now fourth. Average dribbles per touch, 2.3. Um, again, DeMar DeRozan probably ups that percentage a lot, but we were 16th in the NBA right now. 
That's six in the NBA. So when we're talking about the Bulls and the way that they have increased, it's a completely different team because of the way we're moving without the ball, moving the ball around, getting to the paint. Uh, the, we're getting to the paint because people are moving out the ball. This Bulls team is a different team in the way that they're executing, and the results are there. We always have talked about the Bulls playing this way and how that could um, how that could improve the team. And right now, they are improving it in a big way, and so it's noticeable. Now, the Bulls have a matchup tonight against the, the Cleveland Cavaliers. This is a team that was announced that Donovan Mitchell is going to be out in this game. So the Cavs are going to be without Donovan Mitchell, Darius Garland, and Evan Mobley in this game. The Bulls need to take care of business in the, against this game with the Cleveland Cavaliers. You do not, with the momentum that the Bulls are playing with, you do not want to lose a game to a team in the Cavs that are that are missing that many high that many uh, players that are important parts of their rotation. So they're missing their their two highest scores. Donovan Mitchell and Darius Garland were averaging were their only twenty point per game averages um, with that, and then Evan Mobley was third in points per game for that team, and he's out now too. So. When you're looking at a team missing their three highest scores, the only other player close to that is Karis LeVert with 15 points per game and Max Schroots with 14. The Bulls need to take care of business. Now, they do have Jared Allen, who bigs are gonna pro is a big that's probably going to give Nikola Vucevic trouble, but we got more than enough depth and, and intensity for us to be able to take care of business against the Cleveland Cavaliers. There's no ifs, ands, or buts about it. They're starting Dean Wade at that power forward position. Patrick Williams needs to cook. And there's not a single player that can guard Kobe White out on the perimeter from their perimeter defenders. So, again, unless they decide to play Al, uh, Isaac Akuro on, on Kobe White. But then at that point, you're not freeing up another player. This, this is a game where the Bulls have to take care of business. It just is. It went from a game where I was kind of had this on the schedule as this would be a tough game, even with, you know, uh, with, with um, Darius Garland being out. I still thought they had if they have uh, Donovan Mitchell, that can be a tough game for the Bulls. But the Bulls defensively need to feast this game with the brand of defense that we've been playing. There's no reason to believe anything else than the Bulls can take care of the Cleveland Cavaliers defensively. But as we know with this Bulls team throughout the years, this version of the team has been together. They at times have played down the competition. You cannot do that tonight against the Cleveland Cavaliers. You got to take care of business, get it done. And then that way, listen, at that point, you're, you're now probably handily in that 10th seed, but you're steadily improving and getting closer to 500. This is an opportunity for the Chicago Bulls to start making some movement. And they're doing this at a time where they're playing a decent um, home stretch as well. Take care of business. This is another team that's coming into your, biz your, into your building. You have to take care of business against the Cleveland Cavaliers. That's it. Next, th next four games are at home. Cle the Cavs, the Atlanta, uh, the, the Hawks, the Indiana Pacers, and the Philadelphia 76ers when we face them next Saturday. It's all at home. Take care of business at home, on your home court, and we could be looking at a team that could be at 500 moving into the new year. And if that happens, and regardless if it doesn't, you want to get as close to it as possible. But if that does happen, then you're talking about really a second season starting for the Chicago Bulls, especially as you get closer to that trade deadline. And if Zach Levine's move, this is your time to start making movement if you're the Bulls. And let's hope that the team takes advantage of it and just takes care of business. That's really what it just boils down to. We know now, we've seen the heart that you guys have consistently played with over the last, like, 14 games. So, yeah, we keep focusing on the last 11 games being 8-3, and three, but they've been playing with heart a little bit longer than that. You got to keep that going tonight against the Cleveland Cavaliers. You guys already know. We're going to be live here on the channel, uh, so make sure you guys are here for the pregame, the halftime hangout, and postgame shows all live on the channel going down tonight. And by the way, make sure you guys are also subscribed to the channel. I want to keep pushing this because we have a goal of getting to 20,000 subscribers by the end of the season. It's a lofty goal. But when you look at the numbers that we do around here and the fact of how many of you guys that watch videos aren't subscribed, go ahead. Listen, I know I'm in the algorithm. I post a lot. You guys probably see my face a lot. You may even get tired of it. But go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Subscribe to the channel. Help the channel grow. And in turn for that, you already know I am delivering the most consistent content for the Chicago Bulls on all of YouTube. That just is what it is. About 40% of you guys are not subscribed to the channel. Go ahead and hit that subscribe button. I'll make sure I make the subscription worth it. But with that said, it's Saturday, so that means it's still mailbag day. Let's go ahead and get to the voicemails. we got seven of them today. Let's go ahead and play this first one. This one's from Tim. What up, hey? This is Tim calling you, man. Long time listener, whatever. My homie put me on you. Uh, I was just calling about the Bulls, man. I always had faith in Kobe, man. He always reminded me of Tyrese Maxey. I knew. One day, eventually, to come out of him, I just glad it came with the Bulls and not him getting traded somewhere. And this shit happening to us that always happened to us. But 
I had a trade. I know you hate the trade shit all the time, but that's all that's popping right now. So I got a trade for you. What about the Bulls sending the Lonzo Ball contract with maybe a Dalen Terry or Javon Carter or something to Utah for John Collins since Tory Craig going to be out for a while? John Collins kind of brings a little bit of what Tory Craig brings, just a little bit more offense. Be a great, great trade, I think. What you think about that, man? Have a good day. All right. Um, John Collins, no. I, I, I just, like, John Collins' contract mainly, like, he doesn't produce at the level that is that the value is worth that contract. Even if you talk about giving up Lonzo Ball's contract for it, I guess that makes a little bit more sense. But th- you're paying $25 million. So we People talk about Zach Levine's contract as an overpay. Zach, uh, uh, John Collins has gotten worse every step of the way. So, to me, when it comes down to John Collins, that's a hard no for me. And then, even with that said, there's no team that's going to take the Lonzo Ball contract right now. Uh, now, maybe next year when it's an expiring deal, you may have a chance to do that, right? Because if you just want to match something. But I don't necessarily see, a because keep in mind, it's fully guaranteed. I don't really see um, even the Utah Jazz being willing to take Alonzo Ball's contract for John Collins. Now, theoretically, if you're not giving up something that you're not using and you bring a player back that can play for you, you're at a net net win there. But I just, I, I don't know if we're going to use the Alonzo Ball contract. I don't know if John Collins is the player that I want to target for. But I understand where you're coming from with it. I just, I don't necessarily see it, see it that way. I, I don't really like John Collins. There was a time period where I liked John Collins as a player. But now I kind of look at it, and I, and I would rather just say, let's just play Julian Phillips and see what we can develop out of him. But great voicemail, Tim. Thank you for leaving that. Leave more as we keep going. Let's get into the next voicemail. This one's from Caden. What's up, hey? It's your boy, Caden, again. Um, Man, I've been thinking about something. I know a rebuild is not coming. And I know, and I don't want to rebuild personally. Like I agree with the front office on stay, stay competitive as long as you can, be, until you find that star. But do you think that we have judged this front office ability to draft too soon? Because I hear a lot of like, "Yo, do you trust this front office to draft well in a rebuild?" I don't think they draft it badly, just because we haven't given this like young team like the young guys on this team enough time to see. Usually this team goes for project players, and project players take minimum four seasons, five seasons before you even know what you got in them. I think one of the best projects in history to look at is Giannis Antetokounmpo. Like, as an example, he's a project player, and Giannis didn't become the MVP candidate until fourth, fifth season in the league. So I think that's a cool standpoint to look at. Side note, and random stray. Um, man, we should start calling you the goat, bro. Well, we should start calling Pat the designer the goat. One of y'all, man, because that Will Golly dude, he's fucking up, bro. Like, he's he just a hater disguised as a Bulls fan. And, like, when I listen to him, he's just nauseating. I don't know why they call him Will the goat Golly, bro. He, he just up. But I don't want to have to hate on somebody else to show you love, bro. You the best out here, man. No doubt. Doing everything you said, sharing it with the friends, showing everybody the content man keep up what you do bro send my love to pat too because he out here putting on for us too man all right let me know what you think about that yeah so the bulls do take on project players now Giannis didn't become an mvp until when you mentioned it took a while but he was showing himself that he was an impact player and a force before then right so yeah it takes time i think people need to shift their thinking now we used to always think by the third year you have who you're gonna have like you said, it kind of takes now four or five years until that point till you really get to that point. And so we just got to wait on the development. And so, you know, yeah, we've judged AK's drafting history by what we've seen so far. But listen, even Dalen showing a little bit more, being able to stay in the court, play consistent minutes. Julian Phillips is a player I still like, even if he doesn't play until next year. I think that we got a, a good one in that. Isles uh, it's rounding out to a really good player, even if it ends up the ceiling on that being a bench role player. That's still really good. And Patrick Williams is really starting to turn that corner. So. Great points. I do think that, you know, we can't we can we can talk about what we've seen so far. I think that's fair to judge what you've seen so far, but also realize that there's a chance that we the best is yet to come for a lot of these young players that AK drafted. Even looking at Kobe White, we're talking about a fifth year and he's really now turning into the perfect version of himself, being able to and still has room for development. But defensively, offensively, decision making, playmaking, like all those things have really grown exponentially for Kobe White. And that can happen to other players, too. So this time period that we put kind of thinking three years, I think it's, we're heading into the spot of the NBA, especially with like one and done in college and things like that, where we have to realize it could take longer than that, especially depending on who you're drafting. So great point from that, Caden. Great voicemail there, brother. Let's get into this next one. This one's from Shay. What's up, Hayes? This is Shay. You know what? 
I'm going to have to shed some light on something for a lot of Chicago Bulls fans because everybody's funny talking about how that band Nikola Vucevic has been playing this and that, or how he's missing when he's going up against Anthony Davis and people like Joel Embiid, in which, to some degree, they're right, but think about it for a second. Vooch is a good inside finisher, but you also have to remember something. He has late start, and he really doesn't get going until after All-Star break, which is around February. Another instance, is this the people who y'all are getting mad at him for missing shots while he's being contested are good shot blockers. Anthony Davis, I think he leads the league in block shots. Joel Embiid is a decent shot blocker. So he's not going to hit all of his shots. Hell, I wouldn't even be surprised if he laid a goose egg in tomorrow's game against one beyond because one beyond is a good shot blocker as well. Look, y'all, I understand that y'all want to see consistent play out of Nikola Vucevic, but just remember, this man has help on the team. Not just, it's not just him anymore. I've said this for years. Just wait on it. Everybody knows he has slow start, so he will get it together. That's all I got to say. Anyway, hey, tell me what you think. Peace. Too harsh on Vooch. Here's the thing that I always say, Shane, you know this. The proof's in the pudding. And so people are going to judge him based off how he's performing. Now, I talked about the stats. Like, there's been some bad games for Vooch, but Vooch is back playing statistically like a top 10 center when you do the averages. But you want to see that consistency from Vooch. You want to see it from all the players. So, yeah, people are going to talk when, he, when Vooch has a bad game, especially when it's when it's clearly a bad game and it's so evident. And I think you just got to realize that comes with the territory, but also realize that there are absolutely going to be games that Vooch kills. And it, it just is what it is when Vooch kills it out there on the court for the Chicago Bulls. And that is why they signed him until they have a younger center to come in and be ready to take over the mantle. Could have had that uh, with Walker Kessler. But, you know, until they get that, it, it's just going to be what it is. That Vooch is going to get judged what by, by Bulls fans. We've seen it. It's happened since he came here. It's going to keep happening. We, you can point out all the good points that you want. I can, too. For some people, it's just going to be what it's going to be, and that's not really going to change anytime soon. So, you know, everybody's judgment is judged game to game, um, and that's just how it is in the NBA. But great voicemail, Shay. Let's get into this next one. This one is from uh, Debo the Black Panther. CEO, hey, how you doing, man? This is Debo the Black Panther. Hey, I'm a long-time listener, first-time caller, though, and I just wanted to uh, put out to you guys that, hey, man, I'm extremely proud of this team, the way this team is held together. I know we still five games uh, under 500, but I've seen a lot of basketball over my years. Man, I've been a Bulls fan for well over 30 years. And uh, what I see is a team that's ready to fight anybody. They are ready to fight anybody. They're not backing down from anybody. And I'm going to be honest. I do not want this team to allow Zach Levine the privilege of playing for our squad again because at the end of the day, you're getting paid a lot of money. And it is a privilege to play NBA basketball. And I feel like this dude came into this season with a preconceived notion that the team was going to be bad. The team was going to fail. So he already had in his mind that he was going to demand a trade as a first sign of any kind of uh, adverse. Uh, we saw him showcase his skills for the league with the 50 point and nothing else going on. And then after that, pretty much just took nights off. W wouldn't do anything. So bad that even Big Dave, even Big Dave had to call him out. How often do you see Big Dave call out a Chicago Bulls member? Doesn't happen. And I, I feel like he went out. He expected a lot of teams to come calling and knocking on the door, especially to the Lakers. And it didn't happen for him the way he planned. Him up clutch sport. And these, this team has rallied around each other. They rally around each other. Uh, uh, they, they, Initially took the lead, you know, DeMar took the lead. They rallied around DeMar. And out of nowhere, man, we just seen Kobe White blow up. And now Kobe, DeMar, Vooch, all these guys, man, A.O., uh, of course, Caruso, these guys are balling for each other, man. And I love it. I love it. I don't care if we got a losing record as long as we're, as long as we're fighting, as long as we're trying. And that's what I'm seeing. And this team, watch out. Yeah, a lot of people are gonna say, "Oh, he 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 he's uh, going crazy because they're doing better." But uh, I'm I'm calling it now. This team is going to make the playoffs. This team is going to do a little something. I know it's early, but this team is fighting, man. Barring any major injuries, this team will be there, and this team is going to be scared. We've we've only starting to begun to fight. Bubba Gum Billy is doing his thing, man. I can't even hate on no more. 
he's out there coaching. He's he's doing something now. And I think if we let Zach come back, that is going to take away from what we're seeing Kobe do. Great voicemail from Debo here. Like, first of all, thank you for calling. I know you've been in the in the channel and supporting the channel for years at this point. Thank you for leaving a voicemail. I want everybody, if you ever feel an inclination to leave a voicemail, just leave it. This is your all show to too. But as far as the team not backing down from anybody, yes. This team is playing with the heart of the city of Chicago, and that's what we respect. The, the city of Chicago always respects teams, players, whoever, that play with heart, that fight, right, that have that edge. This team is developing it. For the first time, it seems like we have a, a identity again, and we've been playing for that uh, into that identity for, for almost a month straight now. So it feels like it's something that's tangible, it's legit, and we just got to keep it going up all season because the sky's the limit for the team when they play with this level of heart. I really do feel like that. They're going to beat teams that are better than them on paper. And uh, we have a chance to make a decent run to see how far we can go. And I and I love being able to say that about this team, that the heart is no longer the thing that I can question about this team. It makes it amazing to watch, feel, and be a part of and to see it grow so organically like it has. Now, as far as that, don't allow Zach Levine to play another game for the Chicago Bulls. I mean, listen, I, I understand. I, I don't. I'm of two minds with it. There, there's part of me that thinks that Zach won't play another game in the Chicago Bulls uniform. There's part of me that thinks uh, they may not try the trade partner as early and they're going to have to eventually play him to up that trade value. And I'm of two minds of both of that of like, is that good for the overall health of the team, right? And as far as you saying that Zach came in here planning to ask for a trade, I don't know. I don't know the man. I, I, I would hope that that's not the case. I do think that maybe the struggles early on, the discontent with Billy Donovan, maybe that all played a part. But as we've seen, like players take that they, their contract so they can get their money in extension and lock that in. And then they do request a trade a year or two years into that deal because they really didn't want to stay. And I'm not saying that this is Zach. I don't know, right? So I'm not I'm not reporting on that being Zach's mindset or anything like that. But I understand where you're coming from because we've seen a nice spree of that here now in the player empowerment era of the NBA. And Adam Silver has already said that they are looking at things that they can do uh, that would you know, maybe deter from that or maybe affect it. But don't be surprised if maybe you start seeing reverse trade kickers in of something that's like how Zach Levine has a trade kicker. It's a 15% trade clicker, uh, 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 kicker, I think, that they have to pay that out if they trade him. Maybe you see the reverse of that, and I don't know if that's legal with the CBA, but maybe you see a reverse of something like that to where, like, if you request a trade uh, during this deal, uh, we, we get to take some off the top. Like, so maybe it's something like that. We'll end up seeing, man. We'll end up seeing. But great voicemail from Debo. Thank you for leaving that, man. Let's get into this next one. This one's from Big O. What's going on, brother? Hey, it's Big O again, brother. <laughs> Calling in this time because uh, I know a lot of people asking the question. So curious, including myself, can Kobe White be an All Star? Uh, I, I really, I honestly think he absolutely can be an All Star. I just don't think it can be this year, and here's why. Um, there's a slight possibility, but here's why: for anyone on the Bulls to be like selected, not just by the fans, but by the other voters to get in as an All Star. The Bulls will probably have to, I ain't going to say win out, but they got to probably have a win percentage, of, a win, uh, a over 60% win percentage, like from now all the way until the last day of the vote, which is, I mean, they're trending that direction. I ain't going to say they can't do it. They are trending that direction. But within that, they have to be probably a legit top seven team at that, at that point in the time of the season, which is possible. And then I think then, if you look up and the Bulls somewhere land between the 6, 7, and 8 seed, by the time they enter the polls, polls close for the All-Stars, both the All-Stars in, I think most people uh, around the NBA, the media here, they're going to look at it and say, oh, we got to get DeMar DeRozan. I can't see uh, the media, the national media, both Kobe in over DeRozan, especially when you look at his numbers, and his numbers are, you know, just as good, you know. And it's kind of like that credibility thing. Now, this is, this is a very sloppy chance I think Kobe can get in. The Bulls will probably have to jump in that top five. The Bulls jump in that top five seed, whether Levine plays or not, I think we could be looking at a situation where maybe people vote over them. But I can't see one of them getting in and it only being Kobe, and it's being Kobe over tomorrow. I think next year, if Kobe continues to trend, uh, trend up, continue to develop and get better and sh showcase that he's ready. So he's a young up-and-coming all-star. I believe next year they get off to a good start. You know what I mean? They win a bunch of games. Who knows what the roster looks like? But I just think that it'll take for this team to be, uh, you know, it'll have to be 
like crazy noticeable that Kobe Re- Kobe White is the legit reason this team, you know, is uh have success. And he is one of those parts. I'm not saying he's not. I just think that, you know, when you look at the variable, when you know the history of the of the voters and how that goes, um like last year, the Rose are probably shouldn't have made it. All right, a lot to say from Big O there. You guys know Big O be all over the place, and I love it because you 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 can hear the passion in Big O's voice, and that's the thing that I love so much about. That's why I will never stop doing these voicemails is because to hear from Bulls fans that are passionate, it's great. Now, as far as Kobe White being an all-star, here's what I'll say with that. I think that, and you compare, and I'm going to talk about it kind of all, right? Now, the national media does get a vote, but keep in mind, I think they changed the weight of it recently to where the players' vote also is like weighed evenly with the national media. And I do think players are going to recognize what Kobe White's doing. So if fans show up in the fan voting and the players really recognize how good Kobe White has been because he's been killing some of their teams, Kobe White has a chance. Now, I don't know if the whole thing uh, is it in it versus him and DeMar and things like that. Hell, we saw him and Zach get in when the Bulls started struggling by that uh, thing. So I don't uh, – and, and honestly – when you look at the national media, I think the national media were the same ones that called DeMar DeRozan the most overrated signing. So I don't think the national media has like this leaning towards DeMar DeRozan um, kind of as much as you think. I do think that there are some national media analysts that absolutely do. But I think overall, like it comes down to performance. Kobe White is playing at an all-star level. And that's what I'll take, right? If he gets a couple of votes, doesn't make it in, cool. But the play from Kobe White, he deserves to be acknowledged that he is playing right now at an all-star, superstar level, and you can't take that away from Kobe White. If he gets in the all-star game, great. If he doesn't, let him sleep on it. Let him sleep because I tell you what, their team's going to know when Kobe White and the Chicago Bulls come in town and Kobe drops 27-30 to 30 on their head and they're like, damn, that Kobe kid is good, right? So I'll take that, and maybe then it could be a story for him heading into next year. Kobe White, he was a slighted all-star. Can he do it again? And he and he's coming in, he's playing. Then maybe that's when you're going to start seeing that national media story lean towards Kobe White next season if it doesn't happen this season. But great voicemail from Big O there. All right, let's get into this next one. This one's from Alex. Hey, what up, Hayes? This is Alex, <laughs> long-time listener, first-time caller. Wanted to run something by you about the Zach Levine trade, man. I don't know if you've seen some of the proposed trades for us and the Warriors, but I just think that would be something that people are kind of overlooking. So I think CP3 would be a huge move for the Bulls. All we talk about all the time is how we need a true point guard. Why can't we bring in someone like CP3 who's on way too big of a contract, similar to Zach Levine, who can come in and just facilitate like a motherfucker? Obviously, you know, I don't know if the Warriors want Zach Levine, but they're looking for a change. And then you see some of these trades where we throw in Alex Caruso. You know, I'm the last guy who wants to get rid of AC. He's my favorite player. But if we can do Levine and AC and then get something like, you know, CP3, Kuminga, who's looked a ton better. I've seen one with Moses Moody and then, like, two first-round draft picks. I think, like, maybe Trey Jackson Davis as well. Like, I don't know, man. I just think that that's something that needs to be explored more. And, again, maybe the Warriors aren't returning calls. But we know for a fact Steve Kerr's got a hard on for Alex Caruso. So you throw him in the mix, and I think you're going to start getting calls back. You know, that's just my two cents, man. But we got a huge streak of games coming up here. You know, this Cavs, Pacers, and then, you know, Hawks, those type of games are the type of games that are winnable but not guaranteed like the Spurs. Not that the Spurs are ever guaranteed. But these are important games for the Bulls. Can we win the tough, you know, the tough ones that aren't the – te- the teams that are similar to us. You know, we know we can beat the good teams. We hope we can beat the shitty teams. Now let's beat the teams that are on our level. You know, we got a chance to really go on a streak here before facing the Sixers. And, oh, also wanted to hear your take on the Bulls having the fourth easiest schedule for the rest of the season. I mean, it's in the cards, man. All right, I'll, I'll let you go. But I appreciate it, Hayes. Uh, yeah, lo- love the love the pod, man. Love the videos. All right, talk soon. Bye. All right, I got to adamantly disagree. First of all, the whole thing of a true point guard, only people who have been saying the Bulls need a true point guard are fans that really don't understand that there are only a handful of true point guards on. And especially if you're talking about giving up Alex Caruso to get C- CP3, that is a terrible deal in my opinion. No, and we don't even need a traditional, like even Billy Donovan's system isn't necessarily about having a traditional point guard. It's just about having an impact point guard there. And, Co- and Kobe White has been more than enough for that. So, no, I'm good on bringing CP3. I don't think it offers a great deal. Even with Kaminga, I'm not high on Kaminga either. But if you got to give up AC to get CP3, no. Because I'm telling you right now, Alice Caruso impacts winning more for this team than what CP3 and what we need. We, we're we spreading the ball around. If you heard the, the first opening segment, we're, we're getting assists without having a true point guard. It's more It's less about having a true point guard. That was more so when you had Zach and DeMar out there 
it was better to have a true point guard like Lonzo that can also stretch the floor. But people forget Lonzo didn't even operate the offense in the in the half court. That was because of Billy Donovan, not that Lonzo couldn't, but Billy Donovan didn't use him in that way. So I gotta, I'm good on CP3. The CP3 thing keep him far away from the Chicago Bulls. So I'm good on that. Hell no, hell fucking all no to CP3. Not you. Great voicemail, but no, I'm good on CP3. All right, let's get into the last voicemail for today. Then we got a text message. This one's from Eight Lives. What's up, my boy? Hey, this is Eight Lives, man. Got some stuff to say today, man. These just all my opinions in a way I look at things as being a Bulls fan. First of all, uh, this got to be an indictment on the way that Zach was trying to make like everything was down um, the coach fault. And I, I believe a lot of us kind of fell for it, too. It got to be, if I was Donnie, if I was the coach, if I was Billy, and um, all of this stuff had went on, and then I got my team to do this, you think I'm not going to be telling myself, this is indictment on the way Zach was trying to make like everybody was frustrated with losing, and we can't win, like we can't figure it out. All they did was slid Kobe. I mean, all Kobe did was slid in as the leader, and now we got a whole different team. Um, Kobe has got it to the point now where, man, I haven't even heard nobody say Lonzo Ball in a long time, bro. Um, we kind of getting off that Zach. The Zach team shit where the only way we think we could win was with Alonzo Ball, man. That's what Kobe doing for us right now. Kobe doing um he all Kobe also got people saying, Well, why is Patrick Williams playing like this? Because Patrick Williams know this is his boy team now. And they saying this is our team now. And that's why he balling freely like that. It's not that hard to see. With Zach and them things, that that little Zach team, Zach crap that was going on, at the end of the day that was still a, a, a Zach is still a, 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 a Pax and Gar material, bro. So if Zach want to leave, that's cool, man, because in my opinion, I feel like ever since he's with Rich Paul, he had another plan anyway, and they're not going to do nothing but Westbrook to Zach when he get over there. They they sold him on the illusion of looking like a winner, but when he get over there and the Lakers lose, they're going to Westbrook, and they're going to tear him up when he ain't ready to get another con a good contract. So let Zach do what he's doing if that's the case. But, man, I'm kind of finna back off Billy until I see him, because the rotation stuff, I usually mad at tears about rotation. So I'm not really going to be too mad about uh, uh, Billy being a garbage coach. It's kind of it's kind of going to the favor of what Pat Beverly and Noah were saying, that dude, I right, coach, he ain't the best. He ain't no Phil Jackson. But he letting his players play, and they look like they having fun. Now that we ain't got nobody around pouting, talking about what we can't do. We done found another way of winning. I don't care uh, 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 with your boy. Uh, what's, what's, what's my boy named Pat uh, that be on the um, Locked on Bulls with you? I don't care if he is transessential or whatever word he be using. If he's uh, this type of point guard, that type of point guard, I'm not looking for no uh, clearance from Pat on Kobe. Kobe, more than anything, is a winning player. We have a winning player now. Fuck if he's a point guard. I don't care. We have a winning player who make him play. Point blank. He red, my boy. You know I'll be back at you with another one. Go board. Tomorrow, let's handle these Cleveland. I ain't like how when Donovan came that, uh, to the Cleveland the first time, Zach and the man handled it well. Let's see how Kobe handled this thing. Injuries or not, fuck that. Be red. Kobe's impact on P. Will, like, I, I think it's more so the spreading the ball around. But, yeah, he respects P. Will. And this, I mean, he respects Kobe. And Kobe also, the fact that they have the relationship that they do, I think that when he talks to, to Patrick Williams, it's a little bit different, right? He looks up to DeMar. DeMar's done so much in the NBA that there's that idolization. But it's something different when it's your peer and somebody you look at as a brother saying, hey, hey, I'm going to get on your ass. Like, that's different. And so I think that you are seeing that. But it's also Patrick Williams is cutting. He's slashing. He's moving to, uh, to the rim more. And so we, we're seeing him still take that 10.3 shots per game, but it's more impactful because him, he's actually slashing. He's getting to his spots, and he's building off that confidence. And if that comes via him and, and Kobe growing together, that's what we want. That's what we should have wanted coming into this season. And for the Chicago Bulls, you want your young players to grow and develop together. And we're finally getting that. And I don't care what the reason is. I'm glad we're getting now. As far as BD's coaching, yeah, the rotations are always going to be a thing. But like I said before, Billy Donovan's system has always been best when a point guard's playing at a high level. And Kobe White is more than filling that need. And, and because the Bulls are spreading the ball out more, moving off more without the ball, the ball isn't sticking as much. The system is looking incredibly better. And I got to give Billy Donovan credit, even for his defensive schemes, right? And that's one thing that, like, Bulls have had a top five defense with with weak defenders in there. But now you put in Alice Caruso in there. Patrick Williams is playing really well defensively, things like that. Kobe's defensively really turning into a solid defensive player. So I think when, you, when you're when you getting the mix of those things, yeah, the system should look better. And yeah, Billy Donovan deserves a, some credit for that. Absolutely, he deserves some credit for that, especially his defensive concepts. Got to give it up. Billy Donovan over this stretch has coached 
really, really well and trusted his young players. And I got to give Billy Donovan the credit on that one. But all right, we got one text message I want to read. This one's from Beans the Comedian. He says this. Do you think the NBA will switch up the schedule and give the Bulls more nationally televised games? Here's the thing. that You can flex in and out of games. Now, that's more for NBA TV. So I do think that you're, you may see the Bulls flexing the more NBA TV games. TNT has the ability to flex some. I think their ability to flex opens up after January something. So they can flex in and out of games as well. And maybe you do see that. Now, you haven't seen a whole hell of a lot of that over the NBA any NBA season with the ability to flex. But especially with NBA TV, I think you may see more of that for the Chicago Bulls. But as far as like wide national television, uh, like TNT, ESPN, things like that, they have the ability. And I do think if the Bulls move in to that uh, out of the plane, like into an actual playoff spot, you'll probably definitely see that. So great text message there from Beans. But that's my time for today, guys. Make sure you guys are following the show at Bull Central Pod. You can send us any feedback, questions, comments, concerns, bullcentralpod at gmail.com. And then lastly, if you want to leave a text message and our voicemail for the mailbag, number to do so, 773-270-2799. We are the number one spot for everything Chicago Bulls related, thanks to you guys. And like I liked in every episode on, go Bulls. Love you guys. See red if you can, y'all. Peace. This has been a presentation of the Break Break Media. Break, break, media. media.